adventure travelers, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Tavat, a Genshin lore podcast. Last week, we took a stroll back into the Sumeru Desert and discussed Lilipar and the fall of Gorobad. We're still shaking the sand out of our shoes today. This week, we're talking about the veins of Tavat, the lifeline of everything that all connects to Ermansoul, the ley lines. Are you looking for a little jolt of light energy to pass through your synapses? Well, head on over to our website, talesoftavat.com, where you can see visual representations and all kinds of fun stuff for every episode that we do. While you're on our site, make sure that you check out our past seasons and special episodes, artists, spotlights from the community for every episode, wallpapers to download, including some new Fontaine ones, a new resource section that we're creating, and some of our favorite Genshin merch that's recently been updated. Finally, feel free to email us at talesoftavatpod at gmail.com to let us know what you think of this week's episode episode and what topics you'd like to see in the future additionally please feel free to give us a rating on apple spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts it gives us the opportunity to show other travelers what we're doing and if we're something that they should maybe take a gander with on that note we're going to take a gander into ley lines which i think this has been the hardest topic to research out of all the topics we have done thus far on this podcast yes it's a little sparse it is. It's still mysterious. It's still shrouded in mystery. All the mystery. We had to dig in pretty far. Oh, no. no. I uh, thought you didn't like the Sino I, stuff. It's, it's fucking, it got me. <laughs> it, she's been now infected. a part of me. I've been infected by Sino. <laughs> oh my God. I'm wearing shorts. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Oh, there's something wrong. It's the middle of the winter and I have on shorts and I'm, ta- I'm talking like Sino. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We're Shang Yun. I need an exorcist. I think you mean something's right. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds like everything that's right in the world. Damn. <laughs> this seems not it. Are you thinking about adoption? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met a young child named Kale? <laughs> Are you in love with a botanist? I have been talking to imaginary little r r that run around my apartment, so that could be something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys, I think we should call someone. <laughs> At this point, we need Ghostbusters. Nahida. Where's Nahida? <laughs> I don't even know if Nahida could help <laughs> with that. Tiff would just be like, you're an r r too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, aren't you so cute? <laughs> She's like, I'm the Dendro Archon, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said the ley lines are not aranaras and we're introduced to the ley lines much earlier on in the game than we are the aranaras as well the ley lines we are introduced to right in the beginning they're the blue and yellow things that we fight to get money and heroes wit oh i was like blue and yellow thing i was like oh yeah the the ball the sphere things blue oh uh... Why did I think one of them was purple? No purple. Although I feel like because like the ley lines, like they kind of automatically like click with abyss in my head. And I think purple for the abyss. So that makes sense, Sal. Yee. So we have these two ley lines. And if you're someone who, you know, finger mashes through dialogue, you might have missed early on in the game when Lisa brings up the ley lines. So for a lot of travelers, your first introduction to the ley lines is the Blossom of Revelation or the Blossom of Wealth. The Blossom of Revelation is your blue one. It's the one that gives you hero's wit. And your Blossom of Wealth is the yellow one that gives you Mora. Mora. The yellow one gives you wealth? Why do I feel like I always do the yellow one? Those are the Mora ones. You always trying to get money? No, I'm not. I'm always trying to get level up material. I guess, wow. You're doing the wrong one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently. Not even paying it's like, attention. God damn it. Why can't I level my characters up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but why do I have so much Mora? It's amazing. <laughs> I got five bajillion dollars, but I got zero <laughs> hero switch. I'm the opposite. I ran out of Mora last night. I have like 396 Mora or some shit oh my like that. God. BS. I've been running out of Revelation a lot. Yeah, well, you level 90. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like the uh character level up fiend it's amazing brandon how many level 90s do you have as of right now mm, i want to say 44 oh my Jesus god Christ. that's crazy how many characters are there even in this game <laughs> that's wild but anyway I'll, <laughs> i'm sorry i'm digressing i'm like can we make this episode all about brandon's level ups anyway <laughs> i well i just got rosaria to 90 <laughs> yesterday yes. so wait wait who's next as well as well as Baiju. 
<gasps> Next is going to be Amber, and then it'll probably be Shang Yun. Amber's the first character you met in this game, and you're like, <laughs> you could be number 47. <laughs> <laughs> she was the second one I got. No, third one I got to 90, because first was Jean, and then it was Traveler. <laughs> she spent a lot of time at like around 50. So that's better than Shin Yan. I have 17 million Mora. What? Oh my God. <laughs> what? Wow. Is there a raid option in Genshin? <laughs> <laughs> if only because I've got 328 million. Uh, what? You have 300 million Mora? Yeah. What is happening? Are you sure? What? I, I have 300. Million? That's it. I have like 4 million. I don't spend a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> I'm really like evaluating my entire life right now. I really wish this number had commas in it though. <laughs> yeah. I'm like staring at it from across the room, going, wait, how many? One, two, three, one, two, three. You're like squinting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What 17 million four hundred thirty-six thousand two hundred and eight. Well, anyway, you guys being rich aside, I'm like Jean <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Me, Jean Lee, and Mona are just gonna hang out. Anyway, so I, I think what's really important to note is that there are a few different terminologies with ley lines. So I just mentioned two of them, the Blossom of Revelation, the Blossom of Wealth. On top of them, you have the ley line blossoms in general. A ley line outcrop is where the circle thing forms. A ley line blossom is the flower that forms afterwards. And it's said to sprout from the elements that seep out of the ley lines using a person's will as its fertile soil in which to grow, which very much reminded me of visions working off of people's ambitions. Yeah, it makes sense to me because I think of the human realm, you know, we know the human realm was built on top of the light slash elemental realm, and we know that they have a relationship with each other somehow. So mm -hmm. it would make sense that if like a person's will, which is the same thing that grants them their vision, their elemental power, is also eliciting the, the you know the blooming of this uh, elemental energy from a, a ley line outcrop. It's very interesting to me that anything related to the elements relates back to like a person's like heart and soul. Yeah, it's all very very connected between the earth, the human, the all the worlds. Everything is very much just like we see within the ley lines. They it, it kind of has that that physical connection, but it, it's also metaphysical as well. But see, I think that makes perfect sense because I believe that the primordial one created the human realm on top of the elemental realm and usurped the elemental powers to make them work for humanity in a way. So to me, it makes logical sense that the elemental realm is sort of being constricted by the human realm that's sort of been placed on top of it. Oh, interesting. Would you say it was nailed down? In some cases, yeah, but even if it even if it wasn't just the nails, you can see evidence of the tension between the human realm and the elemental realm all over the game. You have ley line disorders, you have the hypostases, you have the Regis and Kathy Levines. <laughs> <laughs> you have just like the freaking the Baptist who can like somehow, even though he's from the abyss, he can weaponize elemental powers and different elements. There's a lot of tension happening into that between the human realm and the elemental realm. And it's having all these side effects throughout the game that we discover and deal with constantly. Mm -hmm. And the plants, as we'll get into in a minute we are sort of described as harmonizing like being tools to harmonize the elemental energy within ley lines so it makes a lot of sense that if you sort of clear up you know you you kind of pop that pimple at the surface oh. of of uh to that when you're doing those blossoms and that you get this plant appear that blooms into a reward because you're sort of clearing up the flow of the elemental energy into the world. That also leads me to a question because we find out in one event, in a few events, that ley lines hold the memories of the world and sometimes they can redisperse those memories. So when we fight a ley line, are we fighting actual monsters or are we fighting like a memory of monsters? Mm, that's a good question. I think it, I think they're memories of monsters. Which this is going to sound so silly too. But that also led me to wonder, like, are weekly bosses, like Child, Raiden, Senora, like, people that we know in the game, like, the fight has already happened. I mean, with Senora, she's literally dead. 
but we can continue fighting her each week. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder if we are also like continuously fighting like the memory again. There's something to be said about that because of the Yaimiko storyline and her story quest. The ley lines carry the memory for people to pass on and they contain memories. Yeah, and I think when you're doing the weekly bosses, it actually says in the game, if you like read the description of what you're about to do, that you're reliving a memory. So I think it really is just sort of the game taking artistic license to let you go back into your memory and replay out what happened. But what's interesting is that the traveler seems to be able to go through those and receive a different physical outcome. And you even see that with their usage of dream solvent, Mm -hmm. which I never really thought too much about in terms of it being like a lore device. I just thought, oh, well, this is something I can use to turn this item into this other item. But if you like look at the description of a dream solvent, it says people once believed that spirits and memories had some material form. If someone dreamed of heaven before waking up clutching a flower, then that blossom must have been made from such a fantasy. Dream solvent does dissolves that which is obtained from memory and transforms it into some other dream. Indeed, below is traded with the stronger stepping stones towards becoming stronger yourself. So Traveler, you know, is reliving memories from time to time, but can use this substance to come out of that memory with a different quote unquote dream, which is manifest as a physical object. Mm, That's so interesting. Which is insane. And it makes me think Traveler clearly can get a different result by reliving the same experience which kind of touches on like a bigger theory of the game that we've all discussed before which is that you know maybe the traveler is going through to that in a time loop trying to get a different result from the time before or like where our our sibling got one result we're trying to get a different one and so is dane's leaf almost and then we switch And do the whole samsara over again. Yeah. Terrible. I honestly, I hate that theory. I know that theory makes like (laughs) the most sense, but I freaking hate it. Like, I I don't, I can't explain why. I just don't like it. We even saw it with part of the finale of Samara, which was fighting Scaramouche, where it's like, we did that how many times? Like, how many times were we stuck in a loop fighting Scaramouche over and over and over again? Until we got a different result at the end. Yeah, it was like, oh God, what didn't he to say? It was like millions. No, oh, was it? Yeah, I don't remember. It was like, but... it was an outrageous number. It was so, I mean, it's probably not millions. It was a very large number. Yes. You know, maybe they're kind of misleading us in a way, but it just seems like a lot of stuff, especially with memories being tied into the ley lines, which are, you know, running throughout the, this entire world. It seems like that's going to come into play in larger and larger ways. Right. And I, I did want to throw out one more term that is also, I think, important for us to understand here, too. When talking about the ley lines, something we often hear is about the ley line disorder. For the most part, when we hear about ley line disorders, that's actually referring to the buffs and anti-buffs that you get in the Spiral Abyss or domains and things like that, whether it be a regular domain or a special event domain. But we also hear the ley line disorder mentioned a lot when they're saying that all the elemental stuff is out of whack here. So something is going on with the ley lines. They are quote unquote sick, you could almost say. And they aren't acting in a normal way, according to a lot of the people uh, within the game. Mm -hmm. And that could be because the Rift Hounds are eating at it. That could be because of something with the Abyss or something else that we don't quite know yet. I think, Brandon, you bringing up the fact that the human realm is built on top of the elemental realm, too, is like probably a big part of that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, isn't that kind of the whole point of the sacred Sakura quest line as well? Like we're doing all of that to kind of cleanse the tree (laughs) because we have all those memories kind of flowing out of them. It's like they sprung a leak. Yes, there is a lot of cleansing going on. And again, I don't know if that's the human realm interfering with the original nature of the elemental realm you know there 
our theories that maybe we were cut off from the imaginary tree, which would have in theory be giving, you know, power to the world. Like if it was cut off from the imaginary tree and became a, a true bubble universe or, or whatever, or, you know, there are other instances where it's like sort of like Watatsumi, where it becomes, you know, leached of nutrients. And there's sort of two different explanations. One is sort of metaphysical and the other is more chemistry based. So I think they leave it kind of open to a degree. I don't remember, and specifically for Sacred Sakura, I don't remember the explanation during that quest as to why it needed to be cleansed. It was like every 60 years or so that we had to like... Like the filth was piling up. So is it maybe the Sacred Sakura is not actually connected at all to Ermansol? Like it just could live on its own? Oh no, I would think it is because even with Ermansol it was being contaminated. I guess contamination is a whole other thing that is going on. Like you see contamination of Ermansol with the forbidden knowledge. Also, I guess like tough emotions and and the, the sort of poisonous will of the dead gods contaminate different things around to that. So yeah, it does seem like maybe the ley line are absorbing not just memories, but also strong emotions, which can contaminate the energy in them, which I would think is also just being added by humanity being involved, which it wasn't designed to be there originally. Yeah, that's very true. Which is a strange concept that humanity wasn't supposed to exist in this area. Uh, I think it was supposed to exist anyways. It was supposed to exist nowhere, just on that damn arc. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Honkai aside, we've already brought up Honkai twice today. We're going to lose Tiff quickly. <laughs> I We should go back to the start of the game. I mentioned earlier that if you button master, you might have missed the very first time we hear about the ley lines, which is actually from Lisa. Miss the librarian. That's it. That's it. She, she was going to be someone else, but like she could have been something different. But she was like, I'm going to be a librarian. Wasn't she like the purple rose of Sumeru or something? Purple Rose Witch. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lisa. She just got like, <laughs> she's a witch. She's a librarian. She's a rose. She's the um... witch of the purple rose. <laughs> yes. Listen, she's someone who studied in the academia for two years, graduated, and then vowed to never go back. <laughs> so people keep trying to convince her she's not going. But so we meet Lisa, and this is right after we fly around Mondstadt with Storm Terror, and Kaya claps for us, and we're like, who is this blue-haired pirate? Oh my god! And he's like, you gotta come with me. And we're like, all right. So we go with him, and then Jean is like all on edge in her office, being like, oh my god, oh my god, what are they doing? Where are they? And Lisa's like, girl, chill. They're coming. Like, they'll be here soon. This is what we agreed on. And then we show up. It's like that fucking vine of like, daddy, chill. <laughs> just Literally. a fucking weird white politician going, what the heck even is that? <laughs> I showed this to Drew not long ago and he was he was very tickled pink. <laughs> But we go up to Lisa and Lisa is telling us a little bit about how this storm terror incident is affecting other things. And she said that Mondstadt's elemental sphere and ley lines are now akin to a yarn ball in the paws of a kitten. And she goes on to say that, you know, as a mage, it's really affecting her. And she says she feels like she's on the edge of a breakout. And I couldn't tell if she meant like an electrical breakout or like her skin was going to break out. But <laughs> I regardless. Think she meant skin. I, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. She electrocuted Kaya once and he says his arm is still numb so you never know he deserved it i took it as it was like it was going to be like her electro like outburst like it was kind of like messing with her mojo but can i also just point out and i pointed this out in maybe it was our devalon episode the fact that lisa and gene are sitting there and they're like don't worry that was our plan and i'm like excuse me you had a plan to get us into your office like what's going on i still find that very sus and just put pointing that out it is you're right but who knows? Maybe that's because they were like, Kaya, go get these people. And they know yeah. how charming Kaya is. And that he'd be able to, you know, convince us regardless to come in. We don't know. I mean, Lisa wouldn't have to convince me at all. I would just follow <laughs> the titties. <laughs> 
Like, mm. we're not following Lisa, though. We're following Kaya. So he's the one who had to convince us. I know. But if Lisa came to get me, I wouldn't have, th- you know, had a second thought. Well, imagine if Jean had come to get you. That's true. I would. I will <laughs> always follow my queen. But that's for very different reasons. <laughs> so I do want to just take a moment to say, though, why this one line from like the very start of the game is so much more important in my head. Though, What is this two years later? <laughs> three years later how many years have they been doing this game (laughs) two it feels like 12 but it's fine it's 12 in a good way lisa we later find out studied in sumeru she studied in the academia she studied there for two years before graduating she witnessed something that made her never want to go back to the academia again you know we have all the theories about lisa's gonna die she did something with forbidden knowledge now she's gonna die quicker whatever it might be but in the sumeru quest it's a Sumeru event where we actually get Lisa's academia skin. We meet one of her ex-classmates who is now a professor in the academia and he's trying to convince her to come back. And he says something similar to Albedo where he's like, you're wasting your potential, Lisa. And she's like, I don't care. He's like, Cyrus wants you to come back. And she's like, Cyrus, who's her mentor, her and Sino's mentor slash dad. She's like, Cyrus knows what I witnessed and he would never make me come back. And I think that's interesting because she was a Spatamod researcher. She studied in Spatamod, which is what Sino did. That's the elementalism, Darshan. And they have been researching the ley lines for years. The event that happens while we're trying to get Lisa's skin is actually us going into domains to help them research the ley lines because they always need someone with combat skills to go with them. And they are so short staffed in the academia that they're paying volunteers with combat skills to do it with them. So, of course, we need the money and Paimon signs us right up. So I feel like for Lisa who now we could say Lisa's not only a vision holder, she's also a mage. She's also someone who has studied the ley lines. To be talking about the ley lines and the elemental sphere of Mondstadt within the first 15 minutes of the game seems like a big deal. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's that whole ley line disruption that's happening all over the world. I mean, we were told over and over, given these omens and these warnings throughout the game that, you know, things are on the elemental front, things are not going correctly into that. And that disaster is kind of looming around the corner again. Not again. Again and again and again. (laughs) Like, you know how earthquakes are one of the big signs of a volcanic eruption? Like what's happening in Iceland right now? Oh, I didn't even know. But also, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think during all the other, like, we have multiple moments of like cataclysmic shit happening do you think the ley line disorders are kind of you know go hand in hand with these moments because there could be a big possibility of like for some reason all of a sudden the light realm is just you know trying to pop through because dragons and (laughs) they kind of just fuck shit up and it causes like mass destruction yeah or even because of the abyss throwing trying to throw off the balance i think that it's possible that because I know there's this theory that Lisa had a bunch of her life taken from her. But what if she actually just saw the future and she knows that the world is about to end? And that's why she's like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm having tea and putting my feet up and being a librarian. I'm going to be a slut and have fun and be lazy. So when we know that her life is going to end short, we just don't know that the rest of ours are going to right. her. <laughs> exactly. She's like, y'all, y'all have fun with that. I'm going to live it up while I still can. <laughs> like, you're all coming with me (laughs) (laughs) and that is definitely like an interesting thought because lisa when she when she's fighting with this like friend of hers who's a professor in spots mod now he's like i just don't understand why you'd be a like a librarian you're putting your skills to waste like your time is worth more than that and she does have something she says where she's like wisdom can be found in all corners of the world basically don't shit on the corner of the world i have found my wisdom in (laughs) it's basically what she says But she then, in the very beginning of the game, after she tells us about this kitten, yarn ball kitten analogy with the ley lines, she actually tells Jean, like, hey, I can actually go look up some stuff in the restricted section of the library. Because I completely forgot that she ever mentioned the restricted section. So that means that she can get through that door that has been there since pre-cataclysm. That's what it seems. And it's like, is it because she's the purple rose witch? Wait, is she a doomsday prepper? Does she have like a whole... (laughs) Like shelves and shelves of canned food in there. 
Why would it be canned food, though? That's the question. Slime condensate just sitting around. Oh, no. Oh, my God. She has, like, a little bed for Jean built in one corner, (laughs) which is just her bed. She has, like, a little cage to put Kaya in, so when she's mad at him, she can just, like, lock him in there and be like, think about what you've done. (laughs) Throw him in. Oh, my God. (laughs) You know Lisa punishes him. She, like, his arm is still numb. And all he did was return a book late. Like, come on. He deserved it. He likes it. <laughs> <laughs> he totally does. So that is the first moment that we ever hear about a ley line. But the second moment I believe we hear about the ley lines, and let me know if we hear about them sooner, it is the Ryan Shogun second storyline. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next one I can think of. I know we touched a lot about the Ryan Shogun storyline during her episode in season two. So if you want to go, was that season two? I don't even know. We talked about that once. You can go back and see it uh, or <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> we talked about that bitch at some point. <laughs> yeah, it was season two. So a quick recap of that. We are commissioned, I believe, by the Adventurers Guild, as per usual, to check something out. We go to look at the roots that are forming out of the sacred Sakura tree, and we find rift towns eating away at the roots. And A ends up being there as well, and she explains to us that the rift towns eating away at the Sakura tree are making them like bleed out memories because the ley lines record and store memories, apparently. (laughs) <laughs> which mm-hmm. this is really the first time we get that essence of a ley line as well. You know, Lisa does not say anything about storing memories and we help her clear the rift towns. We see the ghost of this guy who knew a, and would like have tea with her and her sister. Very sad. We see some of the soldiers who fought during the cataclysm with the Shogun. There's a lot of memories there for a, it's a lot of emotions, but that's when we really learned about First off, that Rift Towns are dicks that like to eat the ley lines. Everybody gotta eat. Why is that the <laughs> primary source of nutrition? There can't be a lot of vitamins there. Circle of life fiends. <laughs> what? The circle of life? This isn't the Lion King. <laughs> Everybody's no. gotta eat something. Or somebody. There's no Timon and Puma. Oh my god. Like every, it's like everyone poops. Everyone's gotta eat. <laughs> All right, Nahida. <laughs> Dookie! When I first did the story quest, I was so confused. Because I felt like they literally threw so much ley line material at us out of nowhere. I was like, I thought these were things I just fought to get money. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, because this is pre-Sumeru. So we haven't made it to Ermin Soul or any of that yet. It was confusing. And you're like, why is this tree and these wolves creating a ghost who is like having memories from the wrong time? And isn't this when we also find out that the sacred Sakura tree did a tiny wimey bullshit thing <laughs> to get uh, created? Yes. Which is similar to that story of the gardener with the seed or the tree branch, the gardener and the tree branch. Gardener and the tree branch. Yeah, there's one, there's a book in Tavat about a gardener and he had this tree branch and he was like, how am I going to make money off of this tree branch? And a voice that we assume is Istara talks to him and is like, you will get an abundance. And like, he plants the tree branch and trusts this person and the person like does some timey-wimey bullshit and makes the tree grow and it's like 500 years later, but the guy is still the same age. It's very Mm. confusing, but that's basically what happened with the sacred Sakura tree. (laughs) Yeah, it was like something implanted in a memory and like a piece of consciousness that took root in the present, but extended backwards through time so that everyone just always remembered it being there, even though it wasn't planted that long ago. Right, because the sacred Sakura was not there before Makoto died. Mm -hmm. Because then A planted it, but it seemed like it had always been there. Because of whatever I, I'm assuming Istaroth did. Yeah. And it held Makoto's consciousness as well, which is crazy. There's a, there's a girl in that tree. Not anymore. <laughs> She's gone now. <laughs> we watched that bubble float away. Yeah, we we let her we set her free. So there was a there was a tree in that titty sword. <laughs> <laughs> Damn tree. Which means that the Ryan Shogun was holding a tree in her titties, too. Just saying. Like, wild. That tree is huge. <laughs> that is, that is, uh, those are some nice boobies. Couple of acorns that you have there. <laughs> some pine cones. Some coconuts. Because those grow on trees, too. 
I will say, after learning more about the ley lines and thinking back to this storyline too, it almost makes me wonder if Istaroth is somehow in charge of the ley lines because they hold memories. They kind of like hold a place in time, which makes me think of like the whole Sakura tree thing as well. Well, it, it's possible that Istaroth created Ermin's soul to establish a sense of time in Tavat because if memories run through a timeline, that's how they get recorded. Like, you can't have recorded memories without time. Yeah. So it makes sense that if Istaroth created that system for memories to be recorded on, it's going to involve time being, you know, transcribed onto the great tree. That makes sense. That does make sense. So then, when is the next time from there that we hear about ley lines? I know they're touched on throughout in you know different places throughout i specifically remember them coming up in tainari story quest because there was a ley line extractor involved oh i don't remember that oh my god that's so bad on my part i'm like i love tainari but well it, it, there wasn't really it wasn't of really any big impact on the main story it was just research happening you know where there was like ley line disruption but i did make a note when i went back to look at it one thing that's interesting that is sort of revealed in that is that animals in Tavat, they actually can tell when there's a ley line disruption happening and they will flee the area. So I thought that was interesting. Didn't Kaveh say something about that too during the Darshan event, like the Darshan competition when he was like hanging out <laughs> with the foxes in the desert? Oh, did Wasn't he? he like they oh. he was like, I don't know. I might be make like confusing them running away from danger with them running to him for resources. <laughs> 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 I could be very wrong, but also like they had those machines out there. They were like, "Come to daddy." Like, yeah, I hope he adopted them all, but I'll hate them. Probably would let him have them. And I think Carcata's original owner, I th I believe he had something to do with the ley line extractors. Oh, the guy who died. And wasn't it like forbidden to actually mess with the ley lines? Yeah, the guy who died. Well, I don't know if it was forbidden to mess with the ley lines since Spatamod is researching the ley lines, but I know that it's against the rules of the academia to use any sort of like mechanical technology like Karkata. Oh, okay. I think that's their way of being like, we don't want a Conria part two. <laughs> right. That's why, I don't know if, if I've mentioned this before, but one of my favorite little snippets about the Sumeru Archon line is that if you've done Tignari's storyline and you go up, I believe, to the Grand Sage's office after finishing the Archon line, or there might have been a different event, I forget what exactly it is, but there's a table you can go up to and you can investigate and read notes. And there's a note saying that people have claimed that a robotic, like, crab or something <laughs> is been cited at paradise dia but if you've done tignari's quest line it says that like the matra say it's no big deal like they've investigated and there's nothing there the idea is that karkata was spotted by someone who didn't know about him and that sino covered it up for <laughs> right. tignari karkata was just having a little adventure and someone was like a fucking giant crab i want to eat it and then karkata just turns back into a box is like ah. <laughs> <laughs> There were, actually was one point before then where I remember ley lines coming up, and that's in Enconomia. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You're you're very right. So the there's three towers in Enconomia, and they were built on top of ley line junctions, and they were built to balance the three realms, which are the elemental realm, the abyss realm, and the human realm. So there, those three realms are kind of converging at these ley line junctions within an Enconomia, and we find out during that whole quest line that Enjo was fiddling with them to make them enhance the abyss powers and throw off the balance. Of course he was. <laughs> of course he was. I love him, but he's a mess. And we find that out from Sumi, who's like the snake lady. Oh my god, Sumi, I miss her. But then we find out that she was doing something shady too, to try to offset the balance for her brethren. Anyone who finds out, I feel, about the ley lines and the, the issues with the elemental sphere of the whole world, they're all trying to fix it. And instead of like converging with one another and like talking with other people about it they just try to do it themselves and it ends up being like shady and not right and not a good place to be mm -hmm. but i thought Inconomia was very interesting when it came to the ley lines because there's no statues of the seven in Inconomia, and there's mm -hmm. also no 
ley line outcrops in Inconomia. There aren't any in Dragonspine or the Chasm. So I will, you know, throw that out there. There are some in the desert of Sumeru, which is their like extension site. But I just think it's interesting that there's like no source of elementalism in Inconomia, despite it being a crossing point for all the Mm -hmm. realms. It's sort of like the no man's land in between the three realms. I will say the Statue of the Seventh part sucks for gameplay, but I understand it. (laughs) So do you think that was always the case, though? Like, because we know that Inconomia sunk into the ground or went somewhere I, in my mind it sunk i don't know if that's actually the the true way but it it did sink into the sea could it be that they were there before and then stuff went or because of the sun children maybe there wasn't any ever well they were there prior to the archons the seven archons because like oh it sunk to the <laughs> ground during the fight between the primordial one and the second who came <laughs> wait so fiends are you saying that there's no statue of the seven because there was no seven <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but that was the silliest the, the, that may have been the dumbest thing I, i'd ever said <laughs> why wait, do you think that the statue of the seven were there oh there were no seven <laughs> <laughs> well but it's not a dumb thing to say though because you would think once the shogun came about that she would have put a statue down there especially after beating orabashi's ass <laughs> Yeah, like afterwards and stuff. Mm-hmm. Why not throw one down there? Or like a statue to Orobashi that can heal me. I don't know. <laughs> Give me something. But they did sink during the fight between the Primordial one and the second who came. So there were no Archons at the time. And I think they were a part of that unified civilization that Brandon has brought up before. Mm. So, you know, it makes sense if part of that civilization was like Conria, the ancient civilization in the Chasm, that those mm-hmm. places in this middle sphere of universe <laughs> would not have elements but after Inconomia and prior to tinyari's storyline there's one other place that we get to hear about the lane lines and i think it's my favorite place but i'm biased and that is during the hidden strife event quest it happened right before sumeru was launched and it's when we get the high pony deluxe skin the best yes the best skin i think we've ever gotten sorry to all the other characters with skins sorry kaya i mean lisa's is pretty damn good but yeah lisa's is great but hidden strife basically starts with paimon finding out that the wand dinery is about to sell some of the best grape juice they've ever had and it's like this like crazy sale where d luke handpicks two barrels worth of grapes and turns them into grape juice and paimon wants it so bad so we go out to the winery and adeline is standing at the front door and we're like hey adeline like we're here for d luke like we want to put it down to We want to put a down payment on this great juice. Um, And Adeline's like, oh, we'll give it to you free of charge. Don't worry about it. But D. Luke is uh, out right now dealing with something. And this is when I was like, oh, Adeline knows that he's the Dark Knight hero. (laughs) And Adeline is totally involved in his shenanigans as the Dark Knight hero. Uh, But she asks us uh, to wait for him. And long story short, we end up going to find him on the Falcon Coast in Mondstadt where he's supposed to be doing something. There's a campsite set up next to a red ley line, which we've never seen before, and we never see anywhere else in the game. And there's a letter there, and it says something along the lines of, like, Dear Dark Knight Hero, uh, we're seeing a repeat of what happened many years ago, and it suggests that D. Luke took care of the initial issue years ago when it happened, but something must have stimulated the ley lines to do it again. And so they are releasing the monsters they recorded once more. There's no way of telling who this letter is from. There's no name or anything related to it. There are two other notes left with it. They're optional to read. The first one says that, you know, the Dark Knight hero was like super smart last time and he lured in all the abyssal people and he pretended to be injured so he could take them on head on. And the second note says that they're going to leave the Dark Knight hero as the lead on taking on the abyss for a very long time. And whoever wrote this note says that a D. Luke should reach out to Albedo, but he just calls him the chief investigation officer to help because he's really smart. And unlike Lisa, he's not as close with Jean. So there's a less of a chance of Jean finding out that Albedo has been contacted because <laughs> Lisa would go running to Jean. The ley line that we is used during that event, we do fight over and over again. We also, the first time we see it, it shows us High Pony D. Luke fighting Abyssal people. So it shows us a memory. And Paimon totally has the hots for D. Luke. Just so you guys know. I mean, I think the entire Genshin community had the hots for D. Luke, <laughs> regardless of 
orientation or like who they really do love they they actually don't like d luke in the game i mean a lot of people suddenly were like what's this man's <laughs> what's this high <laughs> tail pounding a bit like it's just perfect paimon basically starts calling d luke like captain pyro and then she says something about how oh wow d luke looks so young there he i like this outfit makes him look so different like she's like very like wow d luke and a traveler says something and pat uh, and basically suggests like oh what are you thinking over there and paimon's like shut up and she gets like very bashful about it <laughs> <laughs> we go back to the wine the dawn winery and there's a lot of other stuff to this we learn a lot about kaya as well in this storyline but i'm just gonna focus on the ley lines adeline is still standing outside she told us that Diluc said she cannot go inside. Basically, she has to stand outside. It's a whole thing. But she has this letter and she asks if we can help organize the letters. So we go inside and then we feel weird because we have to read the letters. And it's not our mail to read. And D. Luke ends up showing up. He gives us permission to read his mail <laughs> and organize the letters. If he didn't give it to us, that would be a federal fucking crime. It would be. You're right. So, you know, he gives us a free bottle of grape juice. He leaves and we read the letters. And there's a few letters. One is from Varka. One is from G. I think one is from Kaya, one is from Alice, but one is from Albedo. And in his letter, he is like, oh, like, thanks for reaching out to me. I'm not an expert in ley lines, but I can totally try my best to help you learn about them. He says they're a medium for storing information and that it in certain situations, they can record the events happening around them. And he says that they go through a recording and storing process, and sometimes they can be really released again. But he's really not sure how you activate the ley line. So he doesn't know how you control it to make it record or store something or replay something. So like he doesn't know how to work the DVR. Right. He does say, though, that he's like found some context clues, including seeing the abyssal language around ley lines. So he does believe that there are active members of the abyss order who know how to control it. He then also mentions that he wrote this paper about ley lines and he gives it to D. Luke in this letter, but we don't get to see it. And I want to read his paper so badly. But I think it's interesting because it kind of suggests why D. Luke is so obsessed with attacking the Abyss Order and why earlier on we are told that he's in charge of taking on the Abyss Order for an extended period of time. Do you think this means that when we experience our twins memories during the Kari Bear questline that that was triggered on purpose by someone like could our twin have activated that to replay a memory on purpose or Dane's or leave. Dane's leave yeah I think it's very very possible especially since the Kari Bear storyline centers around the abyss mm -hmm. but I was gonna say I think that D. Luke is trying to learn how to see abyssal memories to figure out what exactly happened the day his dad died yeah I could see that I think he wants to know who he has to take down mm -hmm. which from reading the manga I can't tell whoever controls the the beetles that are now in Fontaine. Right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all very interesting. And I feel like Hidden Strife was the first time that we had the ley line information broke down to us more in like a ley lines for dummies format yeah. where the ride and Shogun kind of gave it to us in this extensive, confusing dialogue. And thank you, Albedo, for writing it out so easily and concisely for us. He's the man. <laughs> He's your man. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Just your man. Asterisk, so <laughs> says Beans. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, if someone current like is going to figure it out or at least help Dilu figure it out, it's going to be Albedo. True. Yeah. But you never know. They might get Lisa involved soon. So I always wondered if teleporting around to that, because we know that ley lines record information and memories and strong feelings and all of that. We also know that elements flow through them. And to that, mm -hmm. I always wondered if when you're teleporting around, if you're using the ley line network, because we know it's a global network and to that. But I always wondered, like, how did the abyss get around? Are they using the ley lines to teleport as well? Doesn't Dainsleaf tell us about how the series of tubes that work in the abyss? When we meet him in the chasm, he's like, oh shit, how'd I end up here? Like it right. threw him out to a wrong turn. So you're saying like, is that actually part of the ley lines or was that like another um, system? Right. Since we know that the abyss can activate ley lines somehow, is that what they're using to teleport around to that? Is that their teleport network? Yeah, yes. I mean, they're fucking it up, so they might as well take it for a ride. <laughs> okay, so let me read you the portable waypoint description. 
a pocket-sized item that creates a temporary teleport waypoint. It is capable of connecting with the ley lines, at least to the extent necessary to bring about teleportation. So we know all the waypoints that we go through are connected to their ley lines. What's to say that the people in the abyss can't have access to the ley lines and just use the waypoints we use? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to throw something in about Honkai real quick. Cover your ears, (laughs) Tuff. They're covered. (laughs) So in Honkai Impact, they sort of explain the difference between the sea of quanta and imaginary space as imaginary space which of course is you know hearkening to the imaginary tree mythos but imaginary space in hawkeye is basically the same thing as sea of quanta it's just space that's really close to a world that's still attached to the imaginary tree and the sea of quanta is like all the space sort of in between all the worlds and that's sort of further away from the imaginary tree so i love that's one of the consistencies is that description that al just read really confirms that the ley lines can be used to teleport and what is something that can teleport qubits and quantum information stuff that you would think of when you're thinking of quanta so i love that idea that this light energy system that's going through the world could be used to basically turn yourself into quantum information and and teleport yourself to any other point on in that world i mean quick question how fast does light travel at the speed of light I mean, <laughs> yes, <You're right. laughs> that too. Yeah. That's all, they, that's all they know. <laughs> well, if it's entangled, it could be faster than that. Information could travel faster than that. <laughs> it's interesting, specifically, like, we have the light realm. We have all this, like, information coming from the light realm. It's, it's oh, so fascinating. Well, I will say you were mentioning quanta. Sorry, mm-hmm. Tiff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've seen a lot of people saying that Skirk, design and everything makes people feel like she's like a quanta force a quant is it quanta or quantum like a you mean her element yeah yeah it would be quantum like a quantum element which is basically abyssal yes so a lot of people are saying that like skirk gives off quantum vibes just like the unknown mm. god gives off imaginary vibes yes which is another element in honkai and people are saying that maybe the abyss is going to be this extra element because, you know, mm-hmm. they do say there are more than seven elements in Tavat and there's this unknown element that we have no idea what it is. Yeah, like that black fire, that purple fire that we see Kale yes. use in the manga. Mm-hmm. We've theorized before that that could be like a quantum element. I think that that element is the annoyance against Hawkeye. <laughs> No. <laughs> tiff manifested it. <laughs> yeah, it's the tiff element. <laughs> and then it would make sense that imaginary, which people say the unknown god might have, is not of Tabat because we know the unknown god is most likely a descender, the primordial one, I think we but said. But that's ironic because the unknown god's design is very similar to the Hersher of the Void, which is very much void energy, a.k.a. quantum or abyssal. Yeah, there's a lot of thoughts and questions and whatnot about it, but I would love to hear more from Skirk on the fucking abyss. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it'd be nice if she shows back up. Well, yeah, because she's not even like she kind of left it as well. I'll send my minion over to tell you the information. I'm not even going to bother coming back here. Once child is healed, I will send him your way. I'm like, damn, how bad is child hurt? (laughs) Not that much because she's already sending him back over. She's like, yeah, that bitch will heal up real quick. If I don't see child again until Shneshnaya, I'm going to lose my shit. (laughs) Just throwing it out there. I did just want to say, though, I've always taken imaginary as an element, quote unquote, to be the same as light slash elemental, just as the way that they applied it to to that. Because we know in Tavat lore that the elemental energy is the one that opposes the void energy. Like, remember when in the Sumeru lore with, like, Simurg, that bird made of light energy, basically, that turns into all the Pari when it dives into the remains of Egeria, which is still, like, one of the wackiest pieces of lore in this entire game to me. (laughs) Yeah, we just know from that whole area that there, you know, is this light energy that eradicates the void energy. And we know that the void energy does the same thing to the light energy, because remember in the manga, when Kali is using it, it's almost like it was seeking out any kind of life to to burn through. You say remember, like anyone besides you and me is going to (laughs) remember. 
<laughs> Maybe Al. I'm sure there are some listeners that oh. remember the manga. <laughs> but yeah, Trith, not so much. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Wow, not even Al. Damn it, guys. <laughs> well, well, he, I'm trying to. Re- I'm tr- Brandon, I'm going to get us jackets. The, the manga squad. <laughs> Yeah, the manga readers. <laughs> and it just is like the black flames. I don't believe you. You have to read it at least 15 times to be a true reader. <laughs> okay, I'm too busy doing that for a different manga. Okay. Mm, sounds like an excuse to me. Called like nostalgia because in you, Yasha. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was just going to, that was all just to say, I think it'd be great if they added a new element to Genshin, which would be, you know, this sort of quantum element. Although I think it should be called something else like void or abyssal. I don't know if they need to add an imaginary element because in my mind, that is the elemental energy. That is the light slash elemental realm. It's made of light. It's the thing, the energy that opposes the abyss. So it's kind of already there. Yeah. Like we're all kind of using the imaginary element. And it's kind of like, it goes with the idea of like, I mean, all of the elements that we use are part of, it's not necessarily the rainbow, but there are aspects and colors of light and combined you get white, the pure light form, mm-hmm. whatever, because it's refracting. So I I have no doubt that maybe even the final chapter <laughs> that we get to get to play is is us, you know, combining avatar style. All of it. Oh, the cool. elements like into one energy. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it to me, you would think that like this light energy, because in the other games, the other two Honkai games, they also have the elements in addition to imaginary and quantum as the, their own competing elements. So, and since this is sort of like the light or imaginary realm in Genshin, it makes me wonder if that. So there is something to that, like the elements can be separated out or maybe at some point combined into that other type of pure light energy, because we don't really know enough about the difference. Like, why is there light energy, but then also the elements and they're all a part of the same realm? Yeah, that's very true. It almost feels like if the boundaries keeping the realm separated were to be destroyed, would you then have imaginary and quantum type elements? Right. Into the bot- to like is it because we're just in the elemental realm and we're not just one world type of thing right because a lot of questions to that we're in a world that was designed for uh, apparently these elemental dragons so that's just sort of like the original human realm in a way you know what i mean like it was just a world made with light energy but it manifested as elements maybe yes i don't know a lot of i know it's a lot of speculation but i would like to talk about you actually like gave me a good segue brandon so thank you oh you're welcome (laughs) <laughs> into another creature that likes to try to dissolve space itself and invade new worlds, the Rift Towns. Now, I hate the Rift Towns. I made them <laughs> enemy number two that you meet in my fan fiction. Like, they're the ones who chased Child into the Abyss and gave Nat a scar across her nose. Mm. But you have these Rift Towns, and you do know that they are created by gold. And you also have the Golden Wolf Lord who lives over on Surumi Foggy Island, a.k.a. Depressed Island, that may have or may not have known about the Descenders. There's a lot going on over there, as mm-hmm. we all know. <laughs> but the Golden Wolf Lord is the ruler of the Rift Towns, and he wields the power to command them to dissolve space itself. And that is from straight from your adventure handbook. And we know that dissolving space itself means eating the branches <laughs> of the Ley Lines and the Sakura and bleeding out these memories. Yeah, creating a gateway into the abyss. And so the Rift Towns and the Golden Wolf Lord are actually all creations of gold. She created the Rift Towns intentionally, but not the Golden Wolf Lord. And that's why the Golden Wolf Lord's pure goal in his now newfound life is to just invade worlds that do not belong to it. Like the fucking narwhal. Or the whale. Yeah, <laughs> yes, kinda. similar to the narwhal. Yes, which like another abyssal creature. Spoilers. Apologies. I, I think we're past that. We did, we've we done two oh, yeah, that's true. archons. That's true. No Y'all spoilers. catch up. I will say though, so gold called the Rift Towns Alpha Soul. And I could be saying that wrong, but it is a type of soil. And I think that's very interesting. 
because we know from Albedo that he is also named after soil because of chalk. He's kind of named after both. And Alpha Soul is moderate. This is from the University of Idaho's website. Just so you know, shout out to the University of Idaho world of potatoes. They said that alpha soul is moderately leached soils that have relatively high native fertility, but these soils have mainly formed under forests and have subsurface horizon, which clays have accumulated. So it's not like the best soil, basically. And it's found in like humid temperatures and subhuman regions of the world. My plants have had this type of soil, if I'm understanding it properly, uh, where the top layer has started to become soil because I've overwatered them and it's been too warm because I keep them in the windows and then I get gnats. So it's not good. It's not healthy. And I think it's interesting that Gold chose the name for Rift Towns after this not good soil. But in the World Quest series, Caverena of Good and Evil, which I probably pronounced wrong. Brandon said it right earlier. So just remember what he said. That is where we're introduced to the Pari and Pari land for the first time. They actually describe the Rift Wolves as echoes left from the battles fought so many years ago, which reminded me of the ley lines and memories as well. Mm. So it's interesting that the Rift Towns are considered echoes of the past. And they also eat echoes of the past. So I don't know if this is like eating people's dreams like Zhao does. I don't know what's happening there. Well, I, so I always took that to mean just that their reappearance is an echo of something that happened, which is because they're considered the harbingers of the apocalypse, basically, because they show up to make way for all the other baddies from the abyss before they invade. I mean, that's what they did right when the cataclysm happened. So I always took that to mean that them showing up again now, current day in game, is a harbinger of like potentially the world ending again any time now. But I could be wrong. <laughs> Which is terrifying. No, but you're absolutely right. And the first time we even meet a rift town is on Surumi Island, and they have started to spread ever since. You can find some in Mondstadt now. Yeah, in Mondstadt. It's like, oh, what are you doing here? Yeah, exactly. What are you doing here? And the last thing I found very interesting about them <laughs> is that they give off a ascension material. There's three of them. There's the Concealed Claw, the Concealed Unigis, and the Concealed Talon. So that's them in order. The Concealed Claw description says, Says, by ordinary logic, these objects so alien to this world should not have remained behind after these abnormal creatures were exercised from the land. So suggesting that the Rift Towns were absolved out of Tava at some point and pushed back into the abyss, which kind of goes to what you said, Brandon, that now that they're showing up, it's suggesting that there is another rift in the abyss popping up. Mm -hmm. I think child falling into the abyss also <laughs> suggests that. Poor child literally just fell into the abyss. Then you have the concealed Unigai's description and it says, though they are quite wondrous indeed, these hunting hounds of Alphasol are nothing of note before Durin of hummus. Not hummus, but similar. Durin's made of hummus? What? I'm suddenly very excited <laughs> to go back to Dragon Spy and I'm taking my pita chips. <laughs> it's similar to how you know, the rift towns are called Alpha Soul, and Albedo is actually called Cretaceous. Cretaceous. Yeah, however you say that word. It's interesting because Gold has kind of made like three categories for the things that she has created. And she's like, when she likes them, she's like, you get this category, you get this one, and then you get this one. And if she created more things she liked, I think she'd continue putting them into these three categories. So I thought that was interesting because they're, they're saying they're nothing of note when you look at Durin, basically. Which I'm like, the I don't know, they're all scary to me. And then the Concealed Talon says, all the marvel in this world must pale before Albedo, but it says crit whatever, the greatest work of them all. <laughs> so I don't know, it's interesting that these creatures, ley lines, Albedo's now studying the ley lines to help Diluc. You know, was he ever studying the ley lines before they found the heart in the Barius? I don't know. I couldn't find any connections between gold and the ley lines besides the Rift Towns. But interesting that they're all interconnecting, especially when gold is such a big person that we have not met yet, that is presumed to be alive. It also makes sense that the Rift Wolves and the, the Golden Wolf Lord first appear in Surumi Island because... We know that there was something going on with the ley lines there, probably because of the sky knell that fell there, but that the ley lines being screwed up was a part of what caused the whole ghost island debacle. 
And so if the ley lines are messed up, to me, it makes sense that like maybe the abyss is able to use that disruption to change the scales, like to tip the scales towards the abyss. And that makes reality around them more unstable, which is easier for the the rift wolves to get through or to open up, tear open themselves, you know. Also, speaking of sky nails. Sky nails! If you look at the description of the cryo hypostasis, it actually talks a little bit about the sky nail and dragon spine. And it says that a great nail fell down to dragon spine in a bygone era and has been pouring energy into the ley lines here ever since. Who knows what strange phenomena might occur on the mountain when the nail is dislodged. So I thought that was interesting because that's really straight up proof that these nails at least in part, their function is to pour some kind of energy into the ley lines of Tevat. I mean, that that must be why Dragonspine is like a frozen wasteland now, because of all this energy that's being poured into the ley line, it's sort of overloading the elemental flow in that area. We still don't know what energy it is exactly, (laughs) and why it's, you know, icy in that area, whereas it was probably something else in a different area. And I mean, the my first thought too is I was being very literal of well, it's not really lodge; it's kind of like hanging over the top. I know, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's true. You know, dislodged. It's still something's still keeping it in its space. Right, right. Because none of the nails have actually. We've never really seen them in the ground. They're just hovering. Well, we kind of broke the nail out of dragon spine. We put it back together, didn't we? They probably just have that crazy ore from Celestia that lets them float. Oh, the the phos the pop 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 the peepaw mm, the phosphorite yes. peepaw phosphorite yeah Plastrate. Plastrate. Yeah. Plastrate. yeah and there's the also the unstable one that's in Fontaine oh the the, the Arkham <laughs> yeah Arkham yeah <laughs> well that that's actually a really interesting point too Brandon are all of the like world bosses like that like all the hypostases all the Reggie vines. Do we think that they're related at all to the ley lines? Because we know, at least with the the cubes, with the hypostasis, that some of them have been moved. Yeah, they are related to the ley lines, absolutely. If you look at Cryovine description, it says, Some studies suggest that plants are like the organs of the world, harmonizing the turbulent elemental energies of the ley lines. And if you look in the Adventurer's Handbook, when it talks about both the Pyroregivine and the Frostregivine, it's a giant vine that has absorbed the ancient flame that rages within the ley lines. It is restless as it is filled with endless fury. And then the other one is for the hypostases. Elemental hypostases are the highest form of elemental structures usually formed either at a location bursting with elemental energy or at a clogged ley line. Mm-hmm. So all of it is directly connected to the ley lines and how the ley lines are functioning. I have a lot of question about that. I have a question. Are the whopper flowers part of that or are they abyssal? They're a part of that. They're included, going back to the cryo vine mm-hmm. lore, it says that concrete examples of this phenomena are mist flowers, whopper flowers, and the like, which brim over with elemental energy. I just wanted to know where I should put my anger toward. <laughs> I hate the water flowers. <laughs> like there must be an overflowing ley line nearby. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go pop that pimple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's going to be the most disgusting idea that it's going to be stuck in my head. <laughs> Every time I do them now. Like, Every time no! you do a blossom. <laughs> yeah. Luckily there are no green ones. Oh. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's, with so much connected to the ley lines, like we br- we bring back up Lisa again. It's one of the first things we learn. Mm-hmm. It's so important. Can we zoom out just a minute too? Because I don't think we really ever <laughs> fully described what the ley lines are and how they're structured. Because we, I know we call them a ball of yarn, but... But I don't know if we ever said it's an actual network um, through that's worldwide. To me, when I was when I read about the ley lines and their structure, it really makes me think of I have two analogies. One is a brain, 
Yes. And Ermin's soul is the brain that's recording everything into and that. the Leons are and, like the neurons. Yes, exactly. The Leons yeah. are the neurons. And there's a lot of synaptic stuff happening. Or if that's not easy to follow, you could also think of it as Ermin soul is the beating heart of Tavat and the ley lines are veins. I can read the description of like what the ley lines are. It might help a little bit. The ley lines are a network of elemental energy and memories of everything that has lived in this world, both on the surface and down in the abyss. Note, they did not say Celestia at all. On the surface, as at the extremities of the ley lines... Ley line blossoms can be formed at ley line outcrops, deposits generated from the impeded flow of elemental energy. They use people's will as their fertile soil in which to grow. They feed on elemental energy. So interesting that they say down to the abyss that it's recording memories from there. That could explain why our twin is not considered a descender, because we know that they probably came to to that through the abyss. Exactly. And it's kind of interesting that everything that is basically terrestrial is touched by the ley lines. Nothing above, nothing celestia or higher has anything to do with the ley lines, are not affected by it, are not influenced, and, you know, are not recorded by the ley lines. Which is also funny because I know we've had many theories of what domains are, but in domains the trees where we get our like offerings and our artifacts and all that shit those are considered like miniature ermine soul trees and they are instruments through which the ley lines flow as the domains are built around these trees the overwhelming elemental energy that surges through them causes ley line disorders which we talked about which make elements behave in unpredictable ways a, a way to justify our our fun game mechanics but <laughs> And so are the trees in the domains, are those considered the petrified trees? Yes. And that's what we're doing when we clear the domain as we're sort of revitalizing the petrified tree? Yes, with your resin. Because in the original resin, in like one of the description lines, it says, it is said that the root of all ermensal trees and blossoms in the world are intertwined at the deepest, most hidden place in the earth, and that the pattern the root system makes defines the ley lines of the world. That's in the original resin. In condensed resin, condensed tree resin that can be used instead of original re resin to revitalize petrified trees and ley line blossoms to receive great rewards. Crystal filled with immense energy, the silver white ermine soul trees and blossoms are connected to the ley lines that have been blocked over time. The energy contained in tree resin can purify the substance. So the condensed resin, it's sort of like when you pop a pimple yes. and you squeeze it's that the gusher. pus out of it. Oh my god. I didn't know if there was going to be something other than Honkai that was going to make my stomach <laughs> turn. The regular like original resin is just that, but the condensed resin is... The fucking when you got a shooter, yeah. Uh, shooter, I the blackhead. I can't, I can't. And you gotta clean your mirror <laughs> off. Oh uh, uh, god. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Normally I don't mind stuff like this. <laughs> it's disgusting. But it's, it's nasty. But so what I think is cool is that Ermin Soul, we know, basically grows upside down, like it grows downward. And so the ley lines. They sound like they could be the tips of Ermin Soul's roots that are growing up towards the ground. So when we see a tree into that sprouting up from the ground, that's actually just roots of the Ermin Soul tree, which grows in the opposite direction. Isn't that how you took it out? Like the petrified trees, aren't those just sort of the bottoms of the roots? Yeah, because if you think of it in a way, if they're traveling from where Ermin Soul is now, which we would assume is on like the element realm and the light plane or the light realm it has to go down into the abyss and my theory is the reason that they are petrified is because these roots have possibly been corrupted by the abyss if the abyss is able to corrupt them which is why we have to revitalize it with condensed resin mm, right oh so like when we're in the domain we're actually just where the root and urban soul root is sort of reaching abyssal space yeah and i need to look back at a couple of the domains but there is some writing on the pillars and it looks like abyssal writing and i haven't been able to get like nice screenshots so i can try and translate with like the the known alphabets we have mm -hmm. which travelers if you are key-eyed and can take really good screenshots when you're not getting attacked 
<laughs> definitely send it our way and we will try to translate. <laughs> it's a lot of that. The domains are, again, they're so connected with the ley lines and they're connected with a lot of the time our level up materials. To go back to a theory I had during Viri's episode and kind of to Senora's is we see parts of the history of Fatui members and or of characters or historical characters that have not been referenced any other place. And it's kind of like the memories are stuck within these domains because the current Ermin soul can't mess with it because they're petrified. They're stone. Everything is written in stone at this point because it's petrified wood. So it can't be erased. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And I love sort of the consistency of you have like your petrified trees and the domains that, you know, is one tip of Ermin soul's roots in theory. And then you have other trees like the ones in, in Azuma that are just on the regular surface of Tevat that you have to cleanse. So you either have petrified trees or you have contaminated trees that are sort of at the tips of uh, Ermin Soul's network. A lot of not good trees. <laughs> now, do you think that Nicole is like the Ermin Soul queen and she's the one who's able to activate the ley lines? Possibly. Stop it. I hope not. It, there's a good possibility just because of like how connected she is she's the pimple popper i'm telling you she's 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 our dermatologist going she, in. it's dermatologist going in and picking it up. just like the mm. dermatologist yeah. Yes. Let's fucking the go. She's like somewhere yeah. underground with a gigantic tube of clearasil just going nuts <laughs> i'm leaving <laughs> Guys, it's all in the ley lines. It's all in the ley lines. Everything that is to be, that ever was, that will be, is in the ley lines. <laughs> I'm every ley line. It's all in me. <laughs> That's it. And we're actually going to end the pod forever now. <laughs> 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 I feel like we did psychedelics before we started this. I think so. Please feel free to give us a follow on Instagram, Tales of Tabop Pod, or on Twitter, Tales of Tabop, where you can let us know what you thought of this week's episode or what you'd like to see in the future. You could also shoot us an email at Tales of Tabop Pod at gmail.com. Next week, we are going to be discussing Azdaha and going into Leeway to discuss all the destruction and sadness that comes with Azdaha as well. Until then, travelers, safe journeys. We'll see you next time. Bye, Scott. Care nerds. I need some clear so to clear my head of this episode. Oh, oh. Not just a little astringent. You're good. <laughs>